Okay, so we're diving into something kind of fun today, but also something I think a lot of us are kind of curious about because it's something we see every day. Breakfast cereal. Yeah, yeah. It's like we all grew up with it, right? Right. But you've been sending us a ton of articles and research on it, so I think we need to look past those like colorful boxes and like the fun masks so really different from the sugary stuff we see now oh yeah totally different no sugary cartoon characters on boxes back then that's for sure okay so then what happened how did we go from those like kind of simple beginnings to well i mean some people basically start the day with dessert right right well it kind of like what's happened with a lot of food production mass mass production changed things people's tastes changed and of course there's marketing Right. Right. So over time, companies added more and more sugar. They started processing the grains more. And it became this whole thing about a quick and easy breakfast for kids. Ah, so that's when the cereal aisle basically became a cartoon explosion. Speaking of which, you found some pretty crazy sugar stats about some of these cereals. Like some of them have more sugar per serving than a donut. It's true. Yeah. That's kind of scary, actually. Well, for example, you take something like Frosted Flakes one serving, and these servings are always so small. Oh, tell me about it. You can have like 12 grams of sugar. Right. And then you compare that to a glazed donut, a regular one from like a donut shop. That's about 10 grams. Wow. Okay, so you really are starting your day with a sugar rush. Yeah, and you got to remember, the American Heart Association recommends only about 25 to 36 grams of added sugar a day for adults. Okay, yeah, that puts things in perspective. And it's not just the sugar, right? We were also looking into those refined grains that are in a lot of cereals. Right, right. So whole grains are like the, the gold standard, you know, because yeah. they've got everything, the bran, the germ, the endosperm. Okay, so the whole package. A whole package. Right. So fiber, vitamins, minerals, it's all there. Yeah. But refined grains, they're like, they've been processed so much that they've lost a lot of that good stuff. So it's kind of like... If you think about a potato, right, it's like the difference between a plain baked potato versus like potato chips. Exactly. Like they both started as potatoes. Exactly. But one's been like stripped down and then had a bunch of extra stuff added back in. Right. And because your body digests those refined grains so fast, you can make your blood sugar spike and then crash. Oh, the dreaded sugar crash. The worst. Right. You get that feeling of being hungry and tired so soon after breakfast. And over time, it can actually increase your risk for some serious health problems like type 2 diabetes. Okay, so we've got the Sugar Rush a &D, the refined grain roller coaster, but like we haven't even gotten to those mystery additives yet. Oh, yeah. Like the artificial colors, the preservatives. What's the deal with all that? Yeah, those additives, especially in cereals marketed to kids, oh, yeah. can be a little concerning. It's like they're speaking directly to my inner child with those boxes, like bright colors, cartoon characters. <laughs> But seriously, what is the deal with those additives? Well, some of those artificial colors, especially the really bright ones you see a lot. Yeah, the super vibrant ones. Yeah, they've been linked to things like kids having more trouble focusing, being restless. Or really, so like hyperactivity. Yeah, yeah. exactly, hyperactivity. And with the preservatives, we need more research to really know the long-term effects. Okay. But it's definitely worth thinking about. You know, how much of this stuff are we eating, especially kids, because their bodies are still developing? It really makes you stop and think. Like, you just picture this fun, carefree breakfast, right. and it's like, wait a minute, there might be more to this story. Yeah, for sure. I think it's so important to be informed, especially for parents, you know? Yeah. Just because a cereal has a catchy jingle and a cartoon mascot mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's actually good for your kid. Like, you basically need a PhD in nutrition to decipher all this stuff. It can feel that way sometimes. And speaking of decoding... Earlier, you mentioned that a lot of cereals are like all carbs, no substance, yeah. low on the things we need for a good breakfast, like protein and healthy fats. Absolutely. So can you kind of break that down for us? Why is that balance so important? Sure. So if you think about it, a breakfast that's mostly refined carbs and doesn't have much protein or healthy fats, yeah. it's, it's not going to keep you full for very long. It's true. You're going to be hungry again, like way too soon. Oh, totally. Like I notice if I have... Just cereal for breakfast. I'm starving by like 10, 0 a.m. Exactly. But if I have something like eggs and avocado toast, yeah. I'm good to go for hours. Yeah, because you're getting that balance. Right, the balance. And this actually ties into another thing we see in cereal marketing, that whole low fat thing. It's yeah. like automatically we're supposed to think, oh, low fat, that's the healthy choice. Right, but it's not always that simple. 
definitely not. Like sometimes I feel like those buzzwords, they're almost like a red flag, you know? Yeah, you got to watch out for that. Because it's like, come on, if it seems too good to be true. It probably is. It probably is. So with the low fat thing, like break it down for us. What's the deal? Well, we know that some types of fat aren't good for us, but there are healthy fats that our bodies actually need. You're right. And those healthy fats can actually help you manage your weight because they make you feel more full. Okay, so it's not as simple as just cutting out all fat. Exactly. And a lot of times when food companies take fat out of a product, they add something else back in to give it flavor. And you know what that is? What's that? Sugar. Of course. Okay. Ugh, it's like this never-ending cycle. You can feel that way sometimes. Okay, so we've got to be careful about the low-fat trap. And then there's another thing you mentioned, the fortification fallacy. Can you remind us what that is? Oh, yeah. So a lot of cereals, they say they're enriched or fortified with vitamins and minerals. Right, right. Like it's a good thing. Right. And it's not necessarily bad that they're adding some nutrients back in. Okay. But it doesn't mean that the cereal is suddenly a health food. It's like they're trying to distract us with a little bit of good stuff, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a marketing tactic. Okay. They want you to think that those added vitamins are going to cancel out all the sugar and the refined grains. So sprinkling in some synthetic vitamins doesn't erase all the other stuff. Exactly. That's good to know. And, you know, our bodies often process those added nutrients differently than the ones that occur naturally in food. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, so it's kind of like, would you rather take a multivitamin? Or eat a plate of colorful fruits and vegetables. Right. I'd go for the real food every time. Exactly. I mean, I know those multivitamins are important, but there's just something about whole foods that feels better. Absolutely. You're getting so much more than just isolated nutrients. Okay. So the fortification fallacy, definitely something to watch out for. Oh, and what about those serving sizes? I mean, don't even get me started. I know, right? They're so small. It's like you need a magnifying glass to see how much you're actually supposed to eat. I know. And seriously, who eats half a cup of cereal? I know, right? It's not realistic. So then we end up eating like two or three servings without realizing it. Exactly. And then people wonder why they're not seeing the results they want. Because those calories and the sugar, it all adds up so quickly. It really does. It's like they're setting us up to fail. Okay, so we've talked about the ingredients, the serving sizes, but we can't forget about the elephant, or should I say, the cartoon tiger in the room, oh boy. the marketing, especially to kids. It's definitely a huge factor. It's like those cereal boxes. They're like marketing masterpieces. They are. They're designed to grab kids' attention. And it works. It does. Yeah. And it's really hard for parents to compete with that, you know? It's like you're trying to explain to a five-year-old why oatmeal is a better choice than, like, insert super sugary cereal here. Exactly. Good luck with that. It's an uphill battle for sure. But seriously, this kind of marketing, especially when it's aimed at kids, like, that's got to have some kind of impact, right? It definitely does. It can really influence kids' taste preferences from a young age, and those habits can last a lifetime. It's true. It's like, I still crave the sugary cereals I ate as a kid, even though I know they're not the best for me. Exactly. It's yeah. powerful stuff. And it's not just about individual choices either, right? This kind of aggressive marketing, especially for the less healthy options, it's contributing to bigger problems like childhood obesity. Absolutely. It's a huge factor. It's kind of disheartening, honestly, to think about the impact it's having. Yeah, it really is. And speaking of bigger picture stuff, we can't forget about the environment. Right. Our breakfast choices, they don't just affect our health, right? Exactly. There's an environmental impact, too. Cereal production uses a lot of resources, from the ingredients to the packaging. So even our breakfast bowl could be contributing to things like deforestation and plastic pollution. Unfortunately, yes. Palm oil is a common ingredient in a lot of cereals, and it's a big driver of deforestation. Right, right. And those cereal box liners, they're usually plastic, too. Exactly, and it all adds up. Okay, so a lot to think about here. It can feel overwhelming, but we promised a deep dive, not a guilt trip, right? So we don't have to say goodbye to cereal forever. There's still hope for us cereal lovers. Of course. It's all about making informed choices. Like yes. instead of just grabbing the box with the coolest mascot. Which is like always my instinct. Right. But take a second, flip it over, read the label. Become a serial detective. Exactly. Yeah. So first things first, sugar content. You want to aim for less than 10 grams per serving. Yeah. Even less if you're really watching your sugar intake. Got it. Less sugar. Okay, what about all those other ingredients on the label? It's like, how do we even know what we're looking at? It can be confusing, but a good rule of thumb is to look for whole grains as the first ingredient. 
And honestly, the shorter the ingredient list, the better. Right. Like, if you can't even pronounce half the ingredients, maybe it's not the best choice. Exactly. But let's be real. Sometimes you just really want a bowl of cereal. Oh. Any tips for making it a little healthier? Totally. One thing you can do is pair it with some protein and healthy fats. Okay, so it's like we're balancing things out, right? Exactly. That'll help you stay full longer, too. So instead of just cereal and milk, maybe add some Greek yogurt or some nuts and seeds. Perfect. And don't be afraid to get creative with toppings. Fresh fruit, a little nut butter, even some coconut flakes. It's like building your own breakfast parfait. Exactly. It's all about making it fun and delicious. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about cereal, but there are other options out there, too, if you're looking for something different. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's overnight oats, chia seed pudding, smoothies, tons of possibilities. So many delicious ways to start the day. Well, I think we've all learned a lot today. It's been quite the deep dive. Yes. I know I'm definitely rethinking my relationship with those colorful boxes in my pantry. Me too. And remember, it's not about giving up everything you enjoy. It's about making informed choices that help you feel your best. Absolutely. Now, here's something to think about. If you could create your own healthy breakfast cereal, what would be in it? Let us know. Maybe we'll even have to do a deep dive on DIY breakfast options sometime.